Barry, I remember you at the depths of despair, and you weren't really buying into it at that point. Are, are, you, uh, are you surprised we're back to almost 3,000 on the S&P? Um, <clears throat> I, I wasn't buying into it, actually. You were not, uh, not buying sure. into it. You were not buying into the depths of despair, was what I said, right? Right, right. right. Yeah, no, that's, that's, I mean, that's right. And, um, you know, if you think about what happened, we had a greater than average decline in the market relative to post-World War II recessions. We had a, a almost double of the magnitude of the decline of the market multiple. And the timing of the, the bottom on March 23rd was about right for a recession that's likely to end in June. 100 days, roughly. So the whole thing played out pretty much as you'd expect. Furthermore, when you look at what's happened since then, there's this sort of constant narrative that tech has led the rally and that small caps have lagged. None of that's really true. Small caps are 3% better than the S&P from the lows. Um, the sector action tech's actually fourth behind energy, consumer discretionary materials. The only sector that's kind of lagging that should be doing better is the banking sector. But other, otherwise, this looks like classic early stage cyclical stuff. So, you know, you've had this whole debate. I wrote about it two weeks ago. I called it billionaires row, right? All the billionaire investors that, you know, thought that the market had moved too far, that valuation was way too stretched. My perspective on that is that valuation always looks stretched in the early stages of a new business cycle. And the best returns always come in the first few months of an early business cycle. So that's the tricky dynamic. So I've tried to stay with it uh, and stay long through this whole part of this period. And um, you know, so far, so good. It looks like the beginning of a new business cycle and returns are, are pretty healthy at this point. Mike uh, Santoli, fundamentals line up with, with, uh, with where the market goes eventually, it seems like. Um, there has been some positive things happen over the past six weeks of, as we've been scratching our head and attributing it to the Fed or how, whatever you, what excuse you want to use for, for being uh, bearish in the face of getting back to 3,000 on the S&P. Some of the fundamentals are starting to line up, uh, whether it's the vaccine or whether it's businesses reopening or whether, uh, you know, I, I don't you know, the, the, the uh, flattening of the curve, all those things have gotten yeah. improved over the past six weeks. You, you think there are still people out there saying we're testing the lows or we're going to, uh, we had people saying we were going to slowly grind lower from 2300 on the S&P. They're still saying yeah. that, in fact, but it, it hasn't happened. I don't think there's a lot out there who are, are outright saying, you know, there's a there's a path right back to the lows in any in any quick way. But I do think there's still a lot of resistance to the idea that the market, quote, deserves to be where it is. So the market has basically been feeding off of the suspicion that it had gone too high too fast. And I, that, that probably is going to continue. I was joking on Friday, half joking, really, saying maybe the market's got to keep going up until people stop asking why isn't the market down more. Um, so I do think there's a behavioral positioning element here that you can't discount. But also, those what you refer to as fundamentals, yes, there's going to be momentum toward a reopening. Almost all states are going to do something incrementally. And it just starts to seem as if uh, there's not going to be a quick way to decide that that was wrong. Um, so in other words, it's going to, we're going to see what happens. Business is going to get back to, to trying what it can. And I think the positioning uh, of investors was such that nobody was quite prepared for that. And I, I buy what, what Barry's saying. It's if you date the moves from the low on March 23rd, sure, small caps got pummeled a whole lot more than the S&P did. And they're only regained about half of what they lost, whereas the S&P has regained 65 percent of what it's lost. So it's a way of where you're measuring what's been moving. But in the last couple of weeks in particular, you have started to see the gears click in terms of the cyclical sectors uh, that are working again and that are uh, kind of carrying things a little more, even though as we open up today, the Nasdaq's got the old highs in its sights and Apple is going to be a couple bucks from its all time high and all the rest of it. So it's not as if it's either or in this market. It's people just didn't believe it and they're being punished for it, at least have to this point. Market loves a reset. We're getting, you know, kind of the mother of all really rapid resets in terms of, you know, earnings and, and everybody getting a free pass on this quarter and next.